Flip My Florida Yard is brought to you by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Protecting Florida's environment starts with you. What you do in your yard can have an impact on the health of our environment and water resources. Welcome to Flip My Florida Yard. On today's episode, our flip crew descends upon Jacksonville. It's here we completely flip a front yard for homeowners, Shannon and Keegan. I really am excited to be an example of what is possible with Florida-friendly landscaping so that people can see our house and think, like, we should do that. You guys ready to flip a yard? Yeah! We install a new deck, but not in the backyard. It's going to bring an outdoor area to functionality where they can come out and hang out and spend some good time outside. And you'll learn what makes a plant Florida-friendly. The smell is great. You can, oh gosh, you know, yeah. pinch it off and take a whiff, just run your hand next to it. We'll discover a better way to irrigate your plants that save water and money. They have drip emitters in there that'll put out that little bit drop of water every second. And we take hanging plants to a new level. He is uh, using drought tolerant, Florida friendly type plants and actually doing a vertical garden here. And we do a little tree climbing. I'm gonna come back on you. You got me? All this and more on Flip My Florida Yard. We're knocking on doors. So excited. And flipping yards into beautiful Florida-friendly landscapes. And all in eight hours. Is this really happening? Who's ready? Woo! Organized chaos. Experts show us how to use Florida-friendly landscaping it's principles. Putting the right plant in the right place. Water efficiently. Very low maintenance. Fertilized appropriately. All leading up to a dramatic reveal. Wow! The best surprise of our whole life. Oh, it's a beautiful day here in Jacksonville. We're here to do one thing and one thing only, flip a yard. You guys ready to flip a yard? Yeah! Yeah! Let's go meet the homeowners. We're here. <laughs> Come on down here. Today is the day. Yeah, oh my God. Thoughts, feelings, what are you thinking? This is um, insane. Every feeling on the chart. It's happening right now. Yeah. We have two kids, Gigi and Margo, and we are a blended family. Last year, when we moved in in October, we had all these great dreams for what we were gonna do with our yard. We are constantly visiting local nurseries and asking experts how we can make our yard Florida friendly. Started Googling other ways that we could renovate our yard. And then we found Florida friendly landscaping. There's a lot of stuff already growing. It's not very clean or curated. There's like some blackberry bushes hidden and like one million kinds of ferns. But ultimately, we would just really love to have the front yard just be clean and beautiful and functional. I really am excited to be an example of what is possible with Florida-friendly landscaping so that people can see our house and think, like, we should do that. We're going to completely transform your yard into a beautiful Florida-friendly landscape. Before you leave, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is your flip crew. Yeah! These are industry professionals from all over Jacksonville. So we're super excited, but we gotta get you out of here. Yeah. yeah. You ready to go? Yeah. Okay. All right, to the car! Yeah. <laughs> Kiki, you know where you're going? Big Talbot Island State Park. You all guys right. have an amazing day. All right, let the magic begin. Okay, guys, just bring it in here, bring it in here. Okay, the Infuso Green family just left. You know what that means? We have eight hours to flip this floor to the yard. Who's ready? Woo! All right, I love it. Our designer, Andy, you've got a great plan for us today. Andy, can we get it done? We're gonna make it happen. All right, you guys heard that. We're gonna make it happen. First order of business, removing this large mound of dirt I'm standing on. Can I get an amen? Okay. Yeah. You guys ready? And go! Go, 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 go! Okay, so we're just starting here in the Jacksonville house, and one of the things that we're dealing with is this giant mound of dirt right here in their front yard. This came from the driveway. Well, more on the dirt later. In the meantime, let's meet our flip designer, Andy Turner, from Beautiful Blooms Landscaping to get some perspective on today's task. 
My approach to landscape design is very much about right plant, right place, especially on a project like this when we're doing flora friendly and native, a lot of native plants. You met with the homeowners. What kind of people are they? Uh, something that, they, that stood out when I first met them, they said front porch culture, which I never heard that term before, but something that really stuck with me as I was doing this design, I wanted to create a space where they could feel comfortable to hang out in the front yard and not feel like they're right on the road, but also be able to interact with people that are walking by. Now, let's look at your design. Okay. Let's kind of see what you came up with. A big sore spot with this property, the way it was set up was, was really only one car capable, so yeah. we extended the driveway out. And something that was really important also is there's a slope in the yard. I wanted to create a way to easily access this yard, create a contained manicured space. So we made this deck right here for them to have their coffee. Well, this is that front porch culture, right? Exactly. This deck is actually more of a boardwalk, just kind of an access way. These two olive trees are going to be really nice. These are all palms. We've got the magnolias. We've got a really awesome pollinator garden. What's going to be their reaction when they see this yard for the first time today? They're going to be so excited. <laughs> They're going to love it. But there's the matter of that big dirt pile. Hopefully, we can get it loaded or find a place for it so we can get this job started. But right now, it's definitely high pressure. Before, Shannon and Keegan's driveway was very narrow, causing some issues with two cars coming and going. Shannon's a little bit accident prone. She both did break mirrors. both mirrors. Two mirrors. Well, today, that driveway is getting a major makeover. Not only are we widening it, but we're making it environmentally friendly as well. Reducing stormwater runoff is a Florida-friendly landscaping principle because it really hones in the on the idea that we have to protect and conserve our water. When you park your car on just a concrete slab, any kind of oil or fluid from your car is going to get onto that slab, and when it rains, the rain is going to pick up anything left on that slab and take it immediately to a storm drain. Then it's going to dump out into the nearest creek, and then that will dump into the river and eventually the ocean. So the fact that they're getting permeable pavers today to try to help uh, filter out those contaminants before it hits uh, the creek right down the street is a great thing. This permeable system consists of a fabric underlayment, then a layer of larger gravel, followed by a layer of smaller gravel, and then setting sand is added to allow for a solid base for the pavers. And finally, a hard concrete paver as the driveway surface. The product is, is a great source for residential and commercial projects. We're able to build a system that captures that runoff water and filters it back into the ground. This whole system depends on the simple principle of spacing. So let's talk about the spacing in between these pavers. Why is that important? Well, this is how the water is collected through the pavers. Well, the pavers themselves are, are impervious, but these joints is almost like a drain grate. There's hundreds and hundreds of joints running down this driveway yeah. with all the water is pouring into. So a driveway like this, will all of that rain that hits that driveway or comes off the house soaked through here? It's going to capture all that all that rainwater that's coming through here. You're not going to have to run off onto the road, into the storm system. It's all going to be captured in the driveway. Like a big drain field. Exactly. Wow. Did you know schools across Florida are taking steps to become more green? Students get to get outdoors, get out the classroom, get hands-on experience. Sheena Chen Green shares how this program is helping shape Florida's future. The Florida Green School Designation Program is a voluntary initiative of the Florida Department of Environmental Protection that recognizes Florida's primary and secondary schools who make the voluntary initiative to protect and conserve Florida's natural resources. Being designated as a green school benefits the students, the teachers, in addition to the community at large. Schools can also consider looking at their faucets and fixtures that they have throughout their restrooms as well as in the kitchen areas and switching those to low flow faucets. They also have developed a comprehensive agricultural program in which they incorporate their students. Students here learn about hydroponic planting. Students have an opportunity to learn about composting it is amazing for the students to participate. Students get to get outdoors, get out the classroom, get hands-on experience. Students also learn about gardening and through raised gardening beds. In addition, from a teacher's perspective, every student learns differently. And you'd be surprised those students that may be quiet in a classroom that actually shine bright when you bring them outside and get them in hands-on engagement and in activities. 
Florida Green School designation, our overarching goal and hope is that we're going to make a difference, and not just for today, but for the future of the state of Florida through our young children that we have participating. I personally believe if we can reach the youngest students that we can, they're the ones who is going to drive all of us adults to make the change and be sustainable in that change and be the voices of power and reasons to let everyone know why we love the state of Florida, why we get the tourists that come to Florida, and that we want to keep all our great beauty for the generations to come. Andy's design calls for a deck in the front yard. I check in with deck builder Tony McClim to see how it's coming along. Hey, Tony, how you doing, man? Hey, good, Chad. How's it going? <laughs> man, this thing is coming together really nice here. Well, how's this going to look in the front yard? It's definitely going to give them a bit more of a modern look. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to bring an outdoor area to functionality where they can come out and hang out and spend some good time outside. They're so excited about this new yard and being able to show it off to their neighbors. So this could be like a little bit of a gathering spot, right? That's exactly it. It's gonna be a nice accent and contrast to their house and to the beautiful landscape that they're adding. You need any help? What? You know what? Go ahead and get this block in there for me. You yeah. can let me use this thing? Go ahead and do that. <laughs> Set it up. This is like a hair trigger. Okay, here we go. Give it one L in there. Two more. You're a natural. Well, there we go. A big part of all our flips is installing Florida-friendly plants. Here to help us pick the right plants is University of Florida Extension agent, Tanya Ashworth. The first one here, this is rosemary. Okay. This is a great herb. It likes dry soil, so it's drought tolerant, which is great for water conservation. Um, it likes our nice sandy soil that we have here in Florida. Beautiful blue flowers in the winter. So a lot of great qualities to this plant. So that's the rosemary. Mm -hmm. Now what do we have next here? This is an echinacea or coneflower is a cone common flower. name. So this is another native plant. This is a perennial, a nice strong uh, stem. You can use it as a cut flower, blooms all summer long. And there's lots of really cool varieties. You can get it different colors. There's one called like hot papaya, one mm. called mac and cheese. There's one that's called raspberry truffles. And it's great for attracting birds and butterflies to your yard too. Bonus, bonus. Okay, what else we have here? Oh, I love this native ground cover. A lot of people don't know about this. Mm. This is sunshine mimosa or pattern sunshine puff mimosa. mimosa. Okay. It's a great ground cover. It does full sun to part shade. In the summer, it gets these little pink fluffy little balls and it's pretty sturdy. You can walk on this and even mow it if you needed to. It's very dry. Tolerant. Awesome. Well, you know what? Let's get these in the ground. Okay. You want to help? Sure. Grab these. There is an extension office in every county ready and happy to answer any questions you might have. Oh, yes. The last load, the giant mound of dirt that I was standing on is gone. Let me give you a little quick update of where we are. While we were doing that, our deck builders have been able to frame all this out. All this is looking really good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> These guys are working so hard, they're throwing dirt on the host. I love it. Irrigation is going good. But this is what I really want you to see. Check this out over here. Look at that. So just the beginnings of our paver driveway. These guys have already started putting down pavers. All the gravel has been compacted. And uh, it's just a matter of time. They're going to stack these all the way to the road. So this is looking really good. The permeable pavers really promote a very positive ecosystem in terms of letting the water filter through and help reestablish the aquifer. Andy's design calls for seven large cabbage palms. I asked Dan Sakula from Beautiful Blooms Landscaping the benefits of planting this Florida staple. This is a sable palm or a cabbage palm that is actually the Florida state palm tree. We like to use it because of its resistance to insects and disease. So it's a very, very low maintenance tree. It stands our uh, Florida hurricane season very well. These boots here are the remnants of the fronds. So when it's been trimmed, some of these get left behind. So this is called a boot here. That's right. What is this part down here? This has all been shaved. You okay. use a chainsaw and you just kind of take this dead wood off. Yeah, give me a little leg up here. Yeah. I think I see a coconut up there. Let me get up in here. Okay, I'm up there. There we go. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. This is not a bad climbing tree, Dan. You know, depends on the climber. Depends on the climber. Yep. Yep. All right, how do I get down? I don't know. We're about five hours into the flip and making good progress. The pavers are about halfway done the deck is almost finished, and a lot of plants are in the ground.
While we're hard at work, Keegan and Shannon are out enjoying some great weather at Big Talbot Island State Park, a sea island nature preserve northeast of Jacksonville. There are numerous activities that people can do on Big Talbot Island State Park. Anything from fishing, to boating, to biking, to bird watching, to beaching, to shelling, and of course, kayaking. It's just kind of like this really beautiful Florida outdoor hub. The whole day was kind of a huge science and geography lesson. And history. Was, which was awesome. It's like the best day ever. Jacksonville, Florida is the scene of our incredible yard flip for the Anfuso Green family. We're taking a dull, plain front yard and turning it into a functional, fun, Florida-friendly landscape, all in eight hours. Most people, they're not going to have their entire landscape flipped. Um, but even if you can't do that, anything that you can do to improve the Florida friendliness of your yard, you should definitely do it. Even small incremental changes. I've seen a lot of interest in Florida friendly landscaping. I think a lot of people are starting to take notice of the movement where people are starting to use more of native Florida friendly plants that are easier to take care of. They don't need as much fertilizer and as much water. Both of those things are really expensive and not the best thing for the environment. This is the home stretch. We're, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Our design calls for two large olive trees front and center. In central and north Florida, these beautiful trees are growing in popularity. Oh, I've been waiting for this. This is the olive tree, right? It is, an Arbequina olive tree. A homeowner wanted an olive tree. Awesome. And when they said that, I was like, what, in Florida? Is this a common tree here in Florida? It's not necessarily a common tree, but it's yeah. starting to, to replace some of the citrus blight in Florida because it's a good climate for it. So it's really a great tree to plant. Let's put this sucker in the ground. Wonderful, thank Let's you. Do it. Yeah. So we give them two, one over here and one over there. So they kind of book in our nice boardwalk here. This is gonna be a really nice entrance when you walk into the house. These will get bigger and almost kind of create a little bit of a canopy over that boardwalk. They're gonna love these olive trees. All right, let's go. Look at that, he's level here, he's level here, but is he level here? I don't know, that's, that's oh, the money. You're a little off, the... man, you're a little off. Something's wrong I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> Now let's talk about some of this product we're using here. So now what is this? This is a composite type of material that we use for decking. There are several of them out there. Yeah. They're 95% recycled and reclaimed material. Okay. So they're definitely all about sustainability. Well, I love that. And this color gray, look, you don't have to paint it. You lay it down there and it's kind of done, right? That is it. This, this guy should give you a good 34-year lifespan with zero to little maintenance. It looks good now. Wait till we get some furniture on this and some plants. All yes, this sir. stuff starts coming around. It's going to look amazing. I'm it, looking forward to it. Well, good. You're, the homeowner's going to be here in about two hours. So you guys close? Kind of close. We're almost done. We'll wrap this up. OK, I'm going to leave you alone. All right, appreciate you, Chad. Yep. One of the Florida-friendly landscaping principles is to water efficiently. And a great tool to help us do that is installing drip tubing irrigation in our flower beds. Trevor McLean explains how drip tubing works. How does this drip tube work here? So it's gonna flow through this whole tube and every about foot, foot and a half, they have drip emitters in there that'll put out that drop of water every second. And it accumulates and adds up over the time and it's gonna drip right into that bed where we need that water to go. No loss of water anywhere on this kind of system. The mulch is actually a great combination to go on with this because it retains the moisture, helps uh, drip more directly into it. While paver crew kicks into high gear, some finishing touches get added, like the installation of a green wall. A piece of this project I'm really excited about is this green wall. 
It's going in between these windows to fill this big blank space, and it's just gonna soften up the house so nicely. The mesh material that holds the plants in place is made from recycled plastic bottles, and it comes with its own automated irrigation system. My good friend Chris Whippy is here to with organic graffiti, and he is uh, using drought tolerant, Florida friendly type plants and actually doing a vertical garden here, which is gonna be really awesome. I can't wait for the homeowners to see it. Andy asked me to help unwrap something for him. I have no clue what's under here, but he seems pretty excited about it. All right, is this one of those jokes where we're just gonna keep wrapping it? Hey up? man, I didn't know how much they put on here. This better be good, Andy. This is a lot of work. Oh, -ho, I can see something up there. Oh my gosh. This is gorgeous, Andy. Our friends at Unique Plants and Palms got this for Whoa. us. You've got to be kidding me. That's a showstopper right there. <laughs> oh, man, dude, that, that is awesome. It's called a yucca ristrata. Put it in a pot, maybe water it once every couple weeks. What a piece. Before we jump back into our flip, Tom Wickman from Florida Friendly Landscaping Program shares with us some yard maintenance tips on wildlife maintenance. Attracting wildlife is one of my favorite Florida-friendly landscaping principles, but bird baths, bird feeders, even hummingbird feeders take maintenance. So it's important that you know how to take care of them. Provide a source of water, whether that's a bird bath or maybe even a water garden perhaps, and you wanna make sure that that's clean. So if you have a bird bath, make sure you scrub it out. We wanna scrub that out and change that water every few days. So you don't need any bleach, you don't need any special cleaners, just a scrub brush and a little elbow grease. If you have a bird feeder, we want to keep those cleaned out too, at least every few weeks. Maybe during the summer, you might have to do it a little more often where we'll change out that seed. In between changing out the seed, scrub it out. You can use a 10% bleach solution if it's plastic or glass. If it's a wood product, use just hot soapy water. If you're filling that bird feeder, make sure that you're using fresh seed. Now, if you have that hummingbird feeder, make sure you're changing out that nectar every two to three days. If it's hot in summertime, maybe even a little bit more often, and you don't need the red dye. Just have some sort of red on that hummingbird feeder. Doing these simple practices will keep wildlife coming to your landscape for years to come. We're in Jacksonville, doing a front yard makeover for the Enfuso Green family. This yard is looking amazing. The deck, deck crew, let's give it up for Hollywood Decks. You guys did an awesome job. The decks look amazing. Our green wall is working. Sod is down. Pavers are wrapping up. Family will be here momentarily. We are almost done. The last element of our Florida-friendly landscape, a pollinator garden. What's the value of planting these pollinators in your yard, Nick? They're small but mighty. So this is like the basis of like a good ecosystem. So it's attracting pollinators. It's the host plant to a lot of our butterflies and moths, too. Attracts tons of bees. So I mean, this is really what's going to support wildlife, support birds in your yard. A lot of the shrubs and grasses just don't cut it. We're done. Another impossible flip deadline hit by our amazing crew. This yard is officially flipped. And as a bonus, Shannon and Keegan's children were able to join us for the big reveal. Shannon, introduce me to the kids here real quick. So this is Gigi. Oh, How you doing, Gigi? And Margo. And Margo, Gigi and Margo. I think you're in for a treat. I'm excited. <laughs> well, look, we are so excited to show this yard. Here we go. Here are the Here magic glasses. Are, you guys have been waiting for these. There you go. Pick one. They're coming up the driveway. Okay. <laughs> Pulling the blind, leading the blind <laughs> here. No, Marco, you're coming. Okay, good. <laughs> so we're going to stop right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And you guys turn towards my voice. Okay. Good. There we go. <gasps> we made it. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. We have been all day in your yard. We are so excited to show you your new Florida Friendly Landscape. Do you guys want to see it? Yes. Oh okay, God. when I count to three, I want you to take your glasses off, okay? All right. Ready? One, two, three. Remove your glasses. Oh, oh my God. Andy, hello. This Hi. is incredible. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Why did it happen? Oh, my God. Before, Shannon and Keegan's front yard was pretty bland. But eight hours later, it's been transformed into a water-efficient, Florida-friendly landscape equipped with a widened, permeable paver driveway to prevent stormwater runoff. Front yard decks that serve as a walkway and hangout place for some front yard culture. 
Florida-friendly landscaping with plenty of palms, two olive trees, along with a pollinator garden and a new efficient irrigation system to keep it all watered. And as an added design feature, a green wall. It's a brand new Florida-friendly landscape that enhances and protects the environment. I could not have even like dreamed of this in my life. Okay. This is amazing. Keegan. I can't wrap my head around it. This is incredible. This is better than I could have imagined. We're hoping to continue our positive impact and hope that this really teaches our children about the importance of nature and taking care of the land that you live on. Well, I want to give it up for this incredible crew yes, behind me that did you. such an amazing oh, job. Andy's design from pavers to Hollywood deck to, to everybody who was involved, Beautiful Bloom, this Jacksonville crew, I just, hats off to you guys. You did an incredible job. And uh, I mean, just wow. This so deeply represents what we, what we believe in and our dream of what we want our home to look like and represent. Florida friendly landscape. Thank, Thank you for flipping, flipping our, our Florida, Florida yard. Wow, I am so proud of how this flip turned out. It's our hope that this yard goes on to have a lasting impact, not only for Shannon and Keegan's family, but for Florida as well. Well, that's our show. We hope you're inspired to help Florida's environment by starting in your own yard. And remember, everybody doing a little, well, that's a whole lot. Here we are in our new yard. Just chilling, being warmed by the fire. <laughs> this is my space. I'm also very into coffee on the porch. I sit here and I wave at the neighbors. Come to our backyard too. <laughs> <laughs>